Hi, everybody. It's August 7, 2021. If you have flash flooding in this area of the country, in Nebraska and into Iowa and Kansas, um, know that man has brought it to you, not God, not Mother Nature. Look at all of these frequencies. Very strange things that I have been seeing. Satellite, look at this blob of precipitation. Should have seen it earlier, which I'll probably show you what it was like earlier. But, oops, this drops down. Boom. All right. Uh, let's just take a look at College of DuPage. It's really, oof, man, Mexico is getting slammed again. Check out Mexico flooding. Wow. Massive flooding. Um, but it does look like flooding is taking place. I hope no real destruction, but look at this in Mexico. All right. Um, not natural at all not at all let's see where was it mm -hmm. see the sawtooth and the circular pattern is the high frequencies coming off of our doppler radar and you have quite a lot of them one two three four and they portend tornadoes and extreme weather. Uh, let's let me do sub regional. So Doppler radar is blasting away. Um, you do have your high frequency heating. You have a real shot of frequencies. One, two, three, four, five. You may get tornadoes and extreme weather and high winds and flash flooding. as well up here in Wisconsin. Look at the straight line. Yeah, you got the high frequency right here, the circular pattern. All right. Um, this blob up here, it was a land cane earlier this afternoon. Let me show it to you. This is what they were doing. Wow, that's interesting. And juts out what I believe to be nanobots activated for precipitation. But it's it's like a Lando cane. This is not what we have ever seen until the recent years. All right, let's, here we go. Oh, and that's why I kept checking on it because what the hell are they making now? Look how nicely, perfectly defined cloud, really? Not mother nature and this blob. Storm, uh, cloud activation getting ready for flooding. Look at this tail off this manufactured cloud. It's truly remarkable. You know, the lying 
lying, lying, lying meteorologist never mentioning any of this. Look how perfectly straight that is. Electromagnetic frequencies do that. All right. Then it, yeah. then it became, wow, oof, look at those frequencies. Extremely low frequencies, blasting away. All right, we're gonna stop this twirling around because we want a blob of precipitation and we're going to make it for you. And they did. Here's your blob. All right. I hope everybody's okay in these areas. I will say you have pretty bad thunderstorms happening. Let us know. This thing is so, you know, it's so obvious, man. I can't stand how obvious. I hate arguing the obvious, but really no, that's not mother nature little blips of precipitation all in a nice line all right um oregon new fire started by 3000 lightning strikes check it out man can create what you're looking at right here and i did you know look at these new fires and I don't think anybody is threatened by them. There's a lot of camp areas in Oregon that are closed. Um, lots of fires. So I will link below to these maps. And just so that you can keep yourself up to date, you just click on the icon. Uh, where is this? Blue Bucket Fire, Oregon. Size is the... Uh, third of an acre. It's grass. Okay. Um, but come down. I don't even, I can't even see where I am. There does seem to be a lot of <clears throat> smaller fires in the area of the very large fires sugar fire dog fire dixie fire half a million just about a half a million and you see how white and spotty and lined is this fire okay remember that so i will link below um as well, if you don't want to look at a map, you can look at just columns. Montana, 24 fires. Idaho, 21. Oregon, 18. Washington, 13. California, 11. Alaska, 9. Wyoming, 4. Colorado, 1. Utah, 1. Nevada, 1. Arizona, 1. Minnesota, and South Dakota and Nebraska, 1. Click on your state, Oregon. And here they all are. Okay, um, and you can find out where they're located, how big they are, um, and how contained they are. And numbers for information. As well as the NCWEB <coughs> Incident Information System. And you can check out the fires. All of this will be linked to below. Um, you know, for everybody living out west, you should periodically check out what's happening. And, you know, also, you can go to these sites, which I will link to below. See if there's any smoke around your area. You know, it, which is... This one's very interesting because it looks like this has been burning in Washington forever. What is that? Well, apparently a fire. Okay. Uh, 
all of these fires in Oregon. May they not get bigger, please. Um, huge fires, Dixie Fire. Is this the Tamarack Fire? I, I can't keep up. But Nevada, you have very bad air quality. And I will tell you that they are keeping the smoke right in this area. I saw it last night, and here it is again. And it does not seem to be freely moving very much. Yeah, here's your blob of uh, precipitation that could cause an awful lot of damage. The manufactured cloud, the manufactured cloud, and if I had the time and the ability to concentrate, I would put together all of my satellite and radar images um, pointing out exactly what the signatures are, but I don't. So, um, these fires, not good. All the microwaves, not good. All the cloud coverage, keeping the smoke you know, from dissipating into you know, the atmosphere where it could perhaps, you know, leave the atmosphere where we are breathing. But none of this is real. All manufactured. No, Mother Nature does not create cloud in perfectly straight lines. Nanobots. All right. Ah, uh, yes. Don't leave those comments. Oh, you're such an idiot. There is no nanobots. I you just reveal how oh, um, childish and ignorant you are. I have a weather modification playlist with uh, several videos on it about nanotechnology and how they are using it to control our weather. All right. Um, so, yeah, Nevada. Top story this hour, an air quality alert in effect in Las Vegas. Hazy skies this morning. Here's a look from our rooftop cameras. Really hard to see out there. Unhealthy levels of smoke and ozone today. You can't even see the strip clearly. We have team cut. What a surprise. It's not a surprise. Watch this. Building a wireless power plasma candle. This is your traditional wax candle. Uh, boring. This is also a candle, just a lot cooler. A hidden gem of high voltage electricity is the flame discharge. It's hard to determine who birthed the idea first, either the Soviets or the United States, but this idea first popped up in the 1920s. Who ultimately discovered it doesn't really matter though, because flame discharges are so interesting. I can't stress that enough. They're a form of high-frequency, high-voltage discharge that can be hard to distinguish from actual fire. And wow. High-voltage? Uh, let's go back and listen to what he had just said. I stress that enough. They're a form of high-frequency, high-voltage discharge that can be hard to distinguish from actual fire. In fact, small flame discharges resemble a small candle flame. Well, with the help of my friend Leon from the Tesla Undemir YouTube channel, I'll be making my own plasma generator capable of not only a plasma flame, but also wireless power transmission at the same time. <laughs> oh, I think I left my mic on. Look, this will be linked to below. Uh, but yeah, high frequency, high voltage. Huh. Uh, Hard to distinguish between a real flame? What are we seeing in California? What is this? 
Fying stories of residents who tried to stick it out here as the flames race towards this community. They picked up hoses, they sprayed down their properties, but in the end, this fire was just too much, destroying at least 20 homes across this area. Thousands of people are still evacuated as these fires continue to scorch the West Coast. This morning, raging fires ripping through California. Flames forcing thousands to evacuate. The river fire pushed by dangerous winds and fueled by bone dry brush sweeping through two. Well, I do believe that this is why we see such hot, hot, hot flames because like Jeff Snyder, Jeff Snyder 2 channel talks about the plasma fires. I think that's what we're seeing. I do think that they're, they're doing, that they're using a lot here. Not just plasma fires, but I also think directed energy weapons, um, both. And But when you come across news clips like this... Fueled by bone-dry brush sweeping through... Where'd the fire come from? Okay, look at this. I mean, that looks like almost a bush that's has a lot of dead leaves on it. But this entire thing here, you know, the car, uh, uh, the home, the structures, leveled. Now these fires were real fast. They just whipped through these towns. Unless, uh, Greenville, did I hear it was two hours? Uh, something's very wrong with that. So, catch it when you're watching the news. Sweeping through two counties in Northern California. 50 years of stuff is, is gone. The flames and wind forming this smoke NATO and taking aim at the town of Colfax. Over 75 buildings destroyed there. Colfax went up in, I think, less than 24 hours. And literally just leveled, okay? I don't think it's only plasma fires. I do think that they are using directed energy weapons to just, and look, you can write smart meters, whatever. They're all directed energy weapons. Um, but yeah, I mean, look at all of the trees. And I've been trying to see a 360 of Greenville news clip because where did the fire come from? When you see all of these trees that are fine, but then you see homes brought to ash, you need to start asking questions. Buildings destroyed there. This fire burned through here so fast. And so fast. Look at this dead <clears throat> branch right here. And look at this car. Directed energy weapons can do this. Look at all of this. You know, you've got these hanging branches that really should have gone up in flames. So I think the news shows us the flames, shows us the plasma fires. It's not showing us the directed energy weapons. That, that destruction. So, um, God, this is so upsetting. So friggin' upsetting. Um, look at the trees on either side and the homes just brought, literally just, well, most of it vaporized. The v <laughs> vaporized. You know. The, uh, um, what I learned in one of the videos that I was watching of Jeff Schneider, too, um, he talked about the fires burning inside the logs that don't go out, uh, for a very, very, very long time. So, 
What's interesting is that when you learn from other people and then you're watching these news clips and you come across and you're like, ah, okay. Um, I bet Jeff Snyder could have something to say about this. So let me just see if there's... Uh, All right, look at this. Uh, now, metal is conductive. So if they're shooting frequencies, directed energy weapons, the metal would um, be affected. The leaves and trees would not be. But you have all of this dead brush or close to dead, in virtually every single mainstream media broadcast that is just literally sitting <clears throat> on top of just ash or rubble. But I want you to see this. You see this tree that is white now? Um, <clears throat> Truth is, I don't know much about trees. Maybe there are trees that look like this. Wait one sec. Okay, two. One here, which is, let me see if I can zoom in. Okay. This tree is like, there's no bark on it whatsoever. There's no bark on this one. And what is in between them? Something that has been leveled. Okay, so. What? Uh, there might be trees that are albino or, but the other thing that I learned in uh, Jeff Snyder's videos is that microwaves can strip trees of their bark. And I'm wondering if that is what I'm looking at. My hunch is that Jeff Snyder could have something to say about what we're looking at. Um, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So, as you can see, you've got something leveled, brought down to, you know, just ash behind here as well, and right behind her as well, and you got a lot of trees here that, well, it's not making much sense. Um, I saw this video of Jeff Snyder's, and when it was a couple of months after I arrived here in Montana. I was driving down the mountain and I saw these just um, spots, smoke coming up from the ground. Now, they do a lot of burning here, um, you know, of whatever. That was not what I was looking at. I was looking at this, but it was just clumps, you know, in the ground. Just smoke, nothing else. So let's watch this for a few minutes. This, I believe, is my second live plasma fire. I have not gone out there to verify yet, but the sign is, the clue is, there's no one around here. 
The clue is there's no one around here. Three separate fires had only been burning for approximately two minutes when I spotted this. So right here, let's look. You can see for yourself. Here's the proof. This one in the foreground has lots of unburned in between it and the other fire over in the background. Lots of unburned weeds here in between the two. You can see one, two, three points of smoke, possibly a fourth over here. But that's what these are, separate simultaneous fire ignitions. And see the straight line? I don't know if this is going to pick it up or not. I can't see a damn thing. See the straight line? That's the smoke. That's the fire smoke that has taken on a straight line. The other way you know it had only been burning a couple of minutes is by the smoke cloud. The smoke cloud had only gotten this high. And again, there's no one out there. And the fact that it's made this straight line, I hope it's picking that up. Because I cannot see. But you see that straight line that it's created using the smoke itself? See if we can't duck in here out of that. Okay. It's like it hit a hot spot. And you can see the smoking right over here, completely separate from the fire over here. You're beginning to see flames in a straight line. Well, how many times have we seen these straight lines or just a, a line that is like cutting through the mountain fire. Okay, um, I will link below, but he goes through it and I'll link below to his channel. You can learn a lot. The signatures, oh, look at this. Okay, and it's straight. You see the flames coming up. No, this is not a wildfire. This, as Jeff explains, is a plasma fire coming from the ground. And having, you know, just looked at a lot of the broadcasts, um, I believe that this also is what we are seeing on satellite perhaps in Oregon. Right here. Um, but let me go back. So you can see, wow, that is a tremendous amount of smoke we are looking at just from this line. Uh, that is a plasma fire. As is produced with Lichtenberg burning, where you apply electricity to wood. So how is it that this fire got that big of a surge? When the wind is moving consistently at five miles an hour, and the amount of fuel that it has to burn is consistent across the ground evenly distributed other than in parts like this where there's extra fuel so 
it's certain, 100% certain, that when I first started filming this fire, it had started within minutes, like two minutes or less, five at the most, of when I first started filming it. Because the smoke cloud looked nothing like that. So based on that alone, what we can determine is that this ignited itself. There was no one out there to flick a cigarette butt, or I would have seen them walking. They couldn't have gotten more than a little ways away within the two minutes between the time it started and the time I started filming. So there was no one around when these three fires started simultaneously. That alone tells me all I need to know. So I feel like I'm kind of using a lot of verbiage here to convince people that don't know what I already know. And you notice now it's gone back down. It had that gust, that intense surge, and now it's gone back down again. Maybe it hit a line of foliage like what this is, extra fuel. But the fact that there's nobody around and these fires were going simultaneously with unburned area in between them means there was no one around when they started burning because they had just barely started and there was no one within sight and there still isn't so no one was around when these started that much is able to be determined by the smoke cloud and the burn area. And there were at least two, if not three, simultaneous fires going from the very beginning, because that's when I first started filming, a couple minutes after ignition, and there was already three separate fires going. And in this burn area over here, I can see the unburned spots within the burn area. That's one of the indicators. I will link below to that. Um, he also has another video uh, that shows spotty fires, which we'll get to, but 4,000? A, a plasma flame. 4,000 Celsius. Plasma is everywhere we look. You can see plasma in the house, in your cooktop. It's why these fluorescent lights light up, because of the plasma inside these fluorescent tubes, producing UV light that excites the phosphor on the inside of the tubes. You can see it in these high-tech plasma lighters, as I have here. And of course, you can find it in a plasma globe. So today I'm going to show you how to make an extremely hot large plasma with a simple circuit. Let's begin. Here's the schematic and I'm going to have a link to the site where you copper wire. As you can see, you get a really hot plasma flame. This is near to 4,000 degrees centigrade and will actually melt carbon. The very high voltage between the two carbon rods pulls electrons off of air molecules and creates positive ions. This mixture of electrons and positive ions is conducting and allows the electric current to flow through the air, which further heats up the plasma. Those fires out in California are not natural. They're Air just... Carves a destructive path, now the largest single wildfire in California history. It's also the largest currently burning in the U.S., incinerating some 450,000 acres. I think this is why we see tremendously hot, 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 flames and uh, 
why we also see a lot of spotty fires. Let's see. Oh, wow. Well, I probably just stopped on this just to, yeah, I mean, right behind here, you have a home that has been just pretty much vaporized and look at these leaves ground and left wondering what caused this catastrophic fire it's just um look at this <laughs> okay see i do think that there are two things at least two methods in which they are creating this destruction directed energy weapons along with um sending electrical currents through the ground causing a whole lot of spottiness but check out the flames These fires are coming from the ground. But Jeff also shows how these fires coming from the ground, the plasma fires, reignite um, very hard to put out. Let's, uh, here's another video of his. Burned area within a burned area, and it produces this all the way down. Something like a fractal burn pattern that is produced with the Lichtenberg burning technique, where a, electricity is applied to wood, and it creates a fractal burn pattern, like what's here on the ground. And the spots that don't burn are typically the high spots where there's a little mound it'll be unburned like that because the water the electricity flows like water and the high spots stay dry because they're up above the water level and that's one of the things that it tends to do is leave the high spots unburned like that I can't really see it right here in this pattern all the unburned spots seem to be more random but the fact that there is all these unburned spots proves, just from another angle, this ain't the kind of fire that we're used to. And it's occurred to me, maybe I should contact the fire department and start helping them with their training and development. For instance, there was a news broadcast that showed two college students developed a device using extremely low frequency to put out fires and when I watched them do this they put a speaker up to the fire and it made uh, extremely low frequency that you can't really hear and the fire went out and I thought well, what good is that why don't we just spray it with some you know whatever the typical traditional fire extinguisher again all the unburned the reason for being able to use that type of extremely low frequency technology to put out fires could be useful in this type of situation where you can literally direct your fire extinguisher from a satellite just showing you all the unburned spots that proves this ain't regular fire nope all right jeff snyder two um come on over here check out his videos uh what i like is that many of the videos he is he is literally going through all of the signatures that um, reveal that it was a plasma fire so um, I do think that that's why we are seeing an awful lot of spottiness a lot of these fires on the ground uh, that are not going out
This is one of Jeff's videos, Unextinguishable Reigniting Plasma Fire in uh, Utah. See how it's burning on the underside, not on the top side, radiating up from the bottom. It's what I've showed you before on live plasma fires. All the other logs are going to be the same. Unburnt on the top, highly burnt on the bottom. Let's roll this one over. See the hot bed of coals underneath? Yeah. And how it's totally unburnt on top? Same here. Unburnt on top, highly burnt underneath. Same on these logs. Unburnt on top. I just rolled this one. So you'll be able to see that's where the bottom was. Heat is uh, microwaves are radiating up from the ground, cooking the bottom of the log, leaving the top unburned. So we got a few hot spots here. I'll go around and check out some more of the goodies, but uh, it's all more of the same. Plasma fire, faux show. And again, that's US 6 right there. US Highway 6, this is what they were calling the bear fire. And it's the one that was just barely starting as I drove by last week and they actually ended up closing US Highway 6. Okay, I'll go grab some more uh, good images before. So you can click on the link below, watch that, but uh, very educational. Thank you, Jeff, for your uh, hard work here posting all of these videos. So, um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I, uh, I'd love all of this to matter, but, you know, if people are not interested in uh, finding out what's really happening, and, well, with the Dixie Fire now, PG&E is coming out immediately take it i think we're responsible for that fire i think they're coming out pg and pg and e does not care fine you know we'll we'll uh, come out and we'll say um you know we caused it uh and hell that th they may have you know had a line you know a tree branch hanging on a line and then it sparked the fire but this kind of massive fire, this kind of fire that literally levels buildings in two hours, I'm um, sorry, something else is happening. But it's interesting how PG&E now is coming out almost immediately and saying, well, we might be responsible. Because they don't want anybody to be thinking anything else. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, the, 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 the destruction is unbelievable. And now, you know, will I wake up tomorrow and hear that Chester is gone? Uh, other towns are gone. They're claiming that this fire is just going to rage on for weeks and other towns, whole towns, are threatened by it. I think the last broadcast I watched was 10,000 10,000 homes are threatened by the Dixie Fire that they just can't seem to put out. All right. Check out Jeff's channel, really. Um, yeah, I, I think that they're using a lot of different methods, but fire is coming up from the ground. And, you know, he was just on um, 
the Utah, he said he was US-6. You know, there are so many Glenn Towers, extremely low frequencies, uh, which, yes, they can emit those extremely low frequencies through the ground, um, charge up a really hot fire. Ciao, guys.